Welcome everyone to Mail Fuzz TV. I am Peter and today I'm going to be talking about Constellation Season 1 Episode 8 is the season finale and it's called These Fragments I Shored Against My Ruin. So that's a weird title but <laughs> that sounds like it's from a poem or something. That doesn't sound like just a, <laughs> a name they came up with. Yeah so season finale a little bit later with this one. I was very busy last week. Much like a lot of this show this is a very mixed episode to me. I feel like I was happy early on that we were finally past all the cabin stuff. Like, I was so ready to be done with that, and I was kind of sick of those flashes to that really, really early in the show. I was so happy we were moving beyond that. And we also had that big cliffhanger, which I wasn't really sure how I felt about last time, with the whole, maybe she's in danger, maybe Joe's in danger because Irina's the angel of death or something like that. At least that's how it presented it to us. And I felt like it didn't really live up to anything it did with that cliffhanger. And I also felt like this episode was pretty underwhelming in terms of what it does or in terms of like, obviously I didn't expect all the answers to everything because I, I suspect that it's going to, at least that they're hoping for a season two and that's fair enough. But I would expect a season finale to introduce a really interesting new element like something that adds a bit of spice that kind of changes the status quo and leaves you off excited for what season two could be some new twist on what's going on and i felt like we already like nothing in this episode compared to some of the revelations that were in like episodes three four five like the middle of the season had most of the the interesting swerves in fact the description of this episode in imdb reads as follows, Joe is taken to an astronaut rehabilitation clinic, fair enough, where the truth is revealed. I disagree with that last part, I don't think anything was revealed. <laughs> not really, not, not, nothing major was revealed, there's, there's some bits and pieces, but we're still very much in this, they're treating this like an illness. E even if Irina, like whether or not she believes that deep down that it is just an illness and that it has to be stamped out and she's kind of like denied the, the truth that it really is like two realities and that there was another version of her that's dead or whether she is just choosing to say those things because she has to keep it a secret we're still we're still very much in that that mindset uh the the only interesting character thing really that comes from this is this idea that by the end of the episode joe and alice even are kind of willing to accept that maybe this is just how things are going to be now that this is the status quo, and even if we both believe and agree with each other that Joe switched places and it's not really her mom and not really her Alice and vice versa, they still need each other, and if this is where they're going to have to live the rest of their lives, they might as well, you know, become a new version of this relationship and accept that she can't go back. That, I think from a character perspective, that's super interesting, and I think that does make sense to me as being a uh an end point for the characters at the end of the season it just doesn't really vibe with all the danger it felt like itself at the end of the last episode it felt like we kind of took a harsh turn and i felt like we hadn't been building to this quite this way this should have been something that was maybe going over a few episodes where this idea of the acceptance of this this idea that alice is like look i know you're not really my mother but i got you the other alice didn't Let's make the best of it. That's There's a whole scene where we see both Alice's talking to Paul's daughter in either universe and talking about how lucky or unlucky they are, about their, their parents being alive or not alive, or being alive but being kind of weird and not being sure if it's really them. Uh, they do the same thing with Magnus at Therapy, where we see both versions of Magnus. And these are fine scenes, but I, I almost feel like some of these scenes were the sort of things that I wish we'd been seeing like four or five episodes ago. To me, once you set up the concept that we're dealing with two universes and we're seeing how things are acting differently on each side, like that's what I want to get to. I want to get to how the different characters are, are mirroring each other in some ways through these different experiences. These, this is the sort of thing you could have set this up in the visual language of the show way, way, way back. Instead, we were kind of more concerned with doing just kind of the cryptic like teases and flashes of like floating in space and and all that stuff uh so yeah kind of frustrated with like how far the story actually got in this season and you know we spent seven out of the eight episodes building up to all the cabin stuff we only get this one after the cabin stuff and it does feel like it's just not enough time to really 
flesh things out further or do some real meat with it. Uh, one of the other little complaints I have as well, and may maybe someone can explain this to me, but early in this episode we see Bud wake up in the snow, because obviously Henry and Bud switched back last episode, which is interesting, and when they switched, Bud kind of collapsed in the snow. He wakes up in the snow in the morning and there's no one there. How? How 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 was he left there in the snow alone? There were there was like police around with with the uh, Magnus and Alice and Joe and all that stuff going on. There was a fire, like he didn't wander off like miles away. I don't think he did. It felt like he collapsed, like maybe twenty feet from the house from from the cabin. What? <laughs> they just left him there. <laughs> they forgot they brought him with them. I don't, I don't know. That felt really weird to me and didn't quite click. It was interesting seeing how Bud now acts in this world, because he understands that he's swapped back, he understands that he's not been here for decades, and that his life is very different from his. So he doesn't really care about hiding it necessarily, but he knows how to kind of play around it and just kind of, you know, not act weirded out by it, so he doesn't seem that crazy. Uh, most notably is a scene where Irina asks him for, for dinner, and they he just sort of openly starts talking about it and how... Yeah, he remembers Irina coming back down, but he never met her back then, which makes her go, wait, what? And then he's like, oh, and then, you know, then I was somewhere else, and she died. She died in space. Uh, so this is like him having switched back, which, if Irina truly believes that this is all just mental illness, and I'm not convinced she does necessarily, although it is interesting, I suppose, if she has just, like, really, like, to, to explain it to herself, to get through it, that's how she's been able to deal with it is just convince herself that it is a mental illness and that taking the pills and just getting through it is like how you how you deal with it that's the thing for all the stuff in this episode about whether or not it's real or not we we, we the audience know it's real because bud and henry have absolutely swapped back and we see henry in the bud universe and he has been arrested for shooting paul and also the murder of the guy on the boat and henry's like you know, a stubborn prick about it, and he's like, no, I'm having none of this. I didn't do any of these things. He takes a polygraph. He insists that he takes a polygraph test. Of course, their reaction when he gets all these questions, uh, you know, truthfully, quote-unquote, is that it just means he believes it. It doesn't necessarily mean that it is 100% true. Uh, even though we, the audience, know that everything he's saying, as far as we know, is true. So, I mean, I mean, seeing... See, seeing Bud and Henry deal with each other's lives, especially since Bud's left Henry in a life where he's just committed murder and has all these like addictions that he might now feel in his body that he didn't have before, is particularly mean-spirited, and that's maybe one of the most interesting potential things that I could think about in a season two, is seeing how Bud just enjoys this more lavish life that Henry has because he got successful in NASA. He, he's got, as he points out, he took photos with the president and Muhammad Ali, he's a bigger deal here, he lives life uh, in luxury, and Bud's probably just going to enjoy that in a very unhealthy way. But what else could he get up to, if he even wants to get up to anything, does he care? Obviously he destroys the cow, he has no interest in switching back again, obviously. Uh, he feels that he's owed this life. What's funny though, is that I'd have to do the math to figure it out, but is that even if it is more or less than he had originally in this world, he's not been here for decades, so this life that's being built isn't his that he's built. At a certain point, the ownership of the being in this world has kind of flipped. And I guess to me that's the most interesting question that this episode kind of puts out there, both between Henry and Bud and then obviously the Joe pregnancy stuff. Is this idea is that once you've been swapped over long enough, and in Henry and Bud's case, possibly they've been swapped over longer than they actually lived in their own worlds before they switched, because they're old enough for it now, is that, well, he's spent the rest of his life building this, and, you know, he deserves to keep that life now, because he's kind of earned it here, even if there was a switch a long time ago. Bud's kind of, you know, went down his path. Now, don't get me wrong, he was dealt a, a rough deal, because... When they switched, he all of a sudden was attached to this tragedy, so he wasn't celebrated uh, as an astronaut the same way that Henry ended up being celebrated, because his co-pilots came back alive. So, obviously, I'm not saying it's completely fair, but still, the decades since then, one has went and done this downward spiral, the other one's 
been successful. Admittedly, he's had a goal. He wants to understand what happened to him. Um, and seemingly that's how he probably met Irina, was getting treated for this way back when. Uh, but clearly still believing that there's something to this the entire time. Uh, and likewise, Joe being pregnant kind of introduces this idea of like, okay, she's starting to believe that she can never go back. And her and Alice by the end of the episode are kind of making peace with that and just saying, hey, I think your Alice is okay with that. I heard her talking through the tape recorder. She seems to be accepting that I have you now and maybe we can just live like this. But even aside from that, if Joe's here long enough and she has a kid, which, you know, the madness of this world that she's now in is the father, because they did have sex that one time in the in the hotel back in like episode what, four or something like that. At that point, like, does she build a life here that if she does get a chance to go back in a year, five years, ten years time, which is and just new kid who's ten years old, now she's got this conflict of like, well, I can go back to my real daughter and real husband, or I have this new child here. Alice kind of spells it out for us a little bit at the end of the episode uh, by saying this. I-, I was already thinking it, but she does ponder the question, well, if you're from another world and, you know, you're here now, this baby, like, where's that baby from? Because it comes from you and it comes from the Magnus of this world. So it's a baby of two worlds, effectively. And that does maybe raise some interesting questions of like, well, is it special because it's a baby of two worlds? Is it but he have some sort of ability to jump between worlds because it was uh, a child born of either side. On the DNA thing, uh, Henry seemed quite convinced that the DNA of Bud was not going to match his. It was going to be like a, a flip of his, like an inverse. And they surprise him by saying, though, the DNA was the, exactly what it, we expected it to be. It's the same. So either he was wrong about something or there's something else to that. And I'm not really sure what as of yeah, but uh, curious, certainly. It de- maybe it does suggest that they're not physically jumping, they're only, you know, their consciousness is jumping between the two bodies, but they're not actually physically moving. Which does line up with what we've been talking about for most of the, the season so far. Yeah. Yeah, the baby stuff's interesting. Um, Irina seems to want her to, like, play piano and do things that the Joe of this world did to kind of, like, build up the the, the familiarity, the muscle memory, and that, that kind of helps you sort of readjust back, and they're going to give her the, the, the medication. The other big thing, of course, is that the, the, the baby, the ultrasound, it does look kind of like the cowl, where there's like two. Now, this could just be what twins look like, kind of an ultrasound. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think so, though. This looked more like it was representing the, the, the splitting of two worlds kind of thing. So maybe, maybe there will be twins. And even though they're both born here, maybe one technically belongs to the other. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, the ending's a bit, you know, they do this thing where it's like, after all the, the, the reconciliation, Joe's coming back home, she's agreeing to take her medication, and even though her and Alice are still, you know, secretly took, because Magnus is really upset at Alice for thinking all these things early on in the episode, so Alice, after she talks to the other Alice, makes the choice to lie to her father and say that she knows that this is all made up, that the Joe is you know, not well, and she's saying things that aren't true. But obviously later, she's she clearly does still believe all these things when she's talking to Joe. She's just, she's become smart enough to realise, and Joe, I think, at this point, is becoming smart enough to realise that they really can't talk to anyone else about this because everyone else will just think they're crazy. Everyone else will just think they're ill and that there's something wrong. So the best way to deal with this, whether or not there's ever going to be a chance of like getting back home, openly talking about all this stuff is not going to be the way of doing it. So, yeah. But yeah, the ending's like a sort of creepy horror movie moment again. It kind of made me think of the end of the last episode with the whole uh, Irina standing in the, the you know, dead version of her standing in the cosmonaut suit. Is this sort of like dangerous thing? Uh, we get like the dead Joe in space turning around and we see all the damage to her face. But then she moves. She grabs the iPad and she's all like she's kind of alive. Now, what does that mean exactly? I, we've kind of pondered this a little bit before, this idea that is she technically still kind of alive because her consciousness is still alive in the other world? And because the, the, the body of the other world is still alive, the consciousness is now in the dead Joe is still kind of alive, even though she should be dead, floating in space. I don't know. 
but it, it, they just do this for sort of the, the creepy cut to black cliffhanger thing. It's kind of... Like, this might be very important, right? This might be telling us something very important, that technically in some way she's still alive up there through cosmic, timey-wimey universe stuff where she shouldn't be, but she kind of is. She's kind of a ghost. And there's talk of ghosts in this episode. Alice kind of starts talking about ghosts to her friend. So thematically, it has entered the conversation, is that technically someone here could be classed as a ghost. We see Paul wake up as well. And he says he's seen things. Obviously, this is Paul in the universe where he was shot, because he's dead in the other one. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I just, I felt like the ending just felt like it was going for that sort of, like, wink, wink, kind of jump scare almost moment. It felt like a nothing kind of thing. And I felt kind of the same way, Wait, same way with all the arena stuff. Like they do a big scene where she's on a laptop and she's sending an email saying, hey, we know that going to space makes astronauts crazy. We know this is happening. We hide it. We've got the first ever astronaut. The first person ever went to space is in this padded cell. Interestingly, Joe saw two of them, but Irina claims there's only one, and we only see one later on, which does make me think that this astronaut is maybe crazy in both universes. He's like he's in the same cell in both universes. Like this is a case like I uh, like uh, Bud and Henry, where neither one of them died. They both came back, but they've both ended up in the same padded cell in different universes, and that's why Joe probably saw two. That's my guess right now on that particular thing. But this her writing an email to someone mysterious about saying, "Hey, can you anonymous anonymously send me anything you experience or anything you see?" And we can maybe make some guesses as to who she's sending that email to, but I, I, I don't feel particularly inspired to, <laughs> if I'm honest. I mean, this episode definitely focused more on the human drama side of, like, choosing to to live with this now. I almost think it was maybe a bad idea to... You know, I, I think you probably could have told this story of Joe going from, like, still believing all this stuff... To, st to still believe in by the end, but kind of accepting and wanting to just sort of let go of it so she can have a life. I think that's an interesting story beat to play with the character, uh, and with Alice too. But I think having to do all the Bud and Henry stuff, even though arguably it's more interesting, because it's it, it feels... It feels weird to say it's less complicated, but from a storytelling perspective, it's much simpler, right? The, the, we've seen Henry and Bud do different things, and now we see them interacting in the different worlds. It would have almost been nice if we'd done all the Henry and Bud stuff a little bit earlier, just an episode ago. So this episode's entire runtime could have been about just telling this story with Joe and Alice and just the human emotion stuff. Or maybe even doing that a little bit before. Or maybe having Bud and Henry sort of do more heavy lifting in the, like, oh, we're going to tease, like, a big part of the mythology that we've not really gotten to yet. Uh, so the all the... Uh, the human emotion stuff with the other characters would be fine as not having any big stuff. As it is, though, I kind of got to the end and felt like they didn't give me anything, like, anything, any sort of juicy finale thing. You know, when I think of um, mystery shows like Lost or a, a Twin Peaks or anything like that, I, I you expect a big thing in the finale, something that's going to leave you going, oh, you've completely flipped the table and my expectations and understanding of what's been going on has been altered significantly. And I don't feel like this finale did that. I think the emotional character story makes some sense. Uh, the Bud and Henry stuff is entertaining, and I do like uh, Bud going to the guy he killed in the other universe and just being happy that he's not some hotshot uh, writer who's challenging his opinions. He's actually just delighted to see that he's just a tour guide. Uh, in England, yeah, I mean it's a fine scene, but I I, I was definitely lacking some big dramatic payoff. I think uh, for the end of the episode, and it's probably also true as well because I have said repeatedly to this show that I've not connected with the characters and their drama as much as I would want to, and it would really elevate the show if I did. So the finale really sort of focusing on their decisions, although admittedly. I do think Joe making this decision to try and just accept her life here, even though she knows it wasn't hers originally, I do think it's the most interesting thing they've had her do. I think it's the most interesting thing that character has, you know, had story-wise since the start of the show. It absolutely is. But it would have definitely hit even harder and been more fulfilling 
had I really, really cared about the character story throughout the whole show. I think it all comes back to my complaints all the way back from episode one, is that the execution and the narrative structure and the way it's actually dishing out the uh, the drama just isn't never really quite clicked with me. It's never really quite felt like I really care and invest in the characters all that much. So even now that they're kind of doing some ideas that I like with them, it's still at a distance. I still feel kind of disconnected from them. So we'll see. Uh, yeah. I mean, does it get a season two? I don't know. If this was a Netflix show, I'd say absolutely not. No way. Uh, it's Apple, though, and Apple, at least for now, do seem to be a lot more committed to the shows they make, at least to get a couple of seasons out of them. Maybe just because Apple have a lot of money to throw around more than anything else. And this is probably cheaper than some of the other shows they make. You know, it still had big production values for sure, don't get me wrong, but it, when I'm comparing it in my head to something like, a, you know, what Foundation or or whatever, where it's like, there's nothing set in normal Earth to just film on location or whatever. So, yeah, Con conflicted. Uh, as I have been throughout the whole show, I, I would definitely say it's underwhelming and probably like if I go back to the, the 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 episode list here just to kind of remind myself, yeah, I think episode three with the reveal of Bud and Henry was pretty solid. I think episode four with the whole idea of the left hand of God and really starting to notice the differences. I think those middle episodes were probably the best the show got. I think. The first couple and the last couple have all suffered from the show's execution and how it's dished out its story here at the at the end. I wish I liked it more, because it's definitely playing with a lot of ideas that I really like. But, yeah, it's, it's, it's a lukewarm. It's a, it's a lukewarm... I wouldn't even say a recommendation. Not that, not that you need a recommendation. If you've watched reviews all, all the way up to the last episode, you're, you're probably already watching the show. But I don't think I would actively recommend this to new people. If someone asked me, should I watch Constellation? I would say probably not. You know, if the, a few of these things appeal to you, maybe give it a try, but I, I don't think I would be giving glowing praise for it by any means, and I certainly haven't been since the, since the start of the show. So that is my thoughts on the finale, and indeed the season as a whole. Uh, it's okay, but kinda murky in how it tells its story. And it's not so much that the science fiction elements aren't really fun ideas, I just think there was probably better ways to convey a lot of the information. So, let me know what you thought of the season in the comments below. Like, subscribe, all the usual things that YouTubers say, helps out a bunch, and you can support all the content over at patreon.com slash TV and get some bonuses for your trouble. But thank you once again, I always appreciate it. Keep watching TV, have you got any vanilla?